Hi, this video is about the hair curve set one which I uh, made in the last couple of days and as you can see it's a whole bunch of meshes that are ideal for making stylized hair. I try to make these as varied as possible to get a good start. I can imagine there'll be more that will be needed but I just want to see how I get on with this. Um, so you see it's 4 dollars uh, starting price uh, as I increase the number of strands available I'll probably increase the price, we'll see. Anyway, I've just downloaded, uh, I'm just going to download this and you can see there's um, an additional file. This contains the meshes put into Blender, but also a 3ds Max file that has got the curves. Um, it's kind of like they're a loft shape. I'll show you that in a second. So I'm just going to download this and uh, we'll see that in a second. So what you get here in the 3ds Max file is the curves that are used to make the hair curves. So for example, let me just take one of these and you want to copy the two curves here and the mesh, just control C, control V and make sure it's a copy and move it off to the side. So if you're making any new ones, uh, this file is only available if you buy it from uh, Sketchfab, Artstation or CG Trader. Uh, the Sketchfab is an additional file and it's 3ds Max 2020 or newer. Right, so what you want to do is go into your spline here and you can play with the curves here and let's preview it with a wireframe one. I'm just going to uh, isolate these. So you can move this around like so and rotate it. Now you might get this kind of harsh angle happening and ideally you just push it to where you need but if you do have that harsh angle appearing in uh, various places, let's really demonstrate that. It's so like here and here. That's mainly caused from the fact that this here is it's got some smoothing an angle on it which then gets smooth based on the smoothing groups so I'm just going to show the final result and just increase this and you'll see that it will gradually get rid of some of those you can push it really far to make the whole thing really smooth if you want but I quite like keeping these edges in so it's got a stack of uh, two iterations of turbo smooth based on the smoothing groups which comes from the smooth modifier there then an extra one on top of that which is not based on smoothing groups so it's basically been subdivided uh, an extra three times so you can crunch this right back down if you want to get to something more reasonable okay so that's how that works now if you do mess with those it actually affects the the UVs here. Um, what I have been doing for UVs is just to do uh, a UV UV map, and then just do fit view line, and you get a nice gradient there. You might want to tweak that a bit. Um, so I'll just get rid of that one over there, and then usually just go into the unwrap and uh, open it up and tweak it there but you can totally just do it uh, here and move the move the gizmo or scale the gizmo up and you'll cover cover it all like that right you can rotate that to get the gradient that you want the gradients are supplied so they're just some basic 512 by 512 textures um, and yeah, that's basically how you would do that. You can then turn it into poly paint or whatever you want, but I'll show you that when we come to the ZBrush side. So that's one thing that you can do there, and we can also change this profile. So it's got some little vertexes there so that you can change the profile of these to make them look nicer. And even pull the back one out like that and get even more shapes. Okay. 
can scale the scale that down or up. Just remember to fix the UVs after you're done if you get some issues with it. You can also go back to this one and choose all the verts and scale them. If you change to this one, you can scale them in and get a kind of thinner strand like that. And if you want um, even more profile control, you can pull these out like that and you'll get a kind of double ridge. And you can carry on refining these just by clicking on refine, click some points. And now if I move these back, we'll get even more kind of extra strands like that. And you can make more intricate ones. This will likely happen in a future pack if I feel uh, it's needed, but yeah, for now that's really, really it. Um, once, once you've done editing these curves, if you've done any, any update, you want to basically collapse the whole stack here. So I recommend going to the tool here and doing uh, modify a stack result, collapse selected. But also after that, um, so instead of it being editable mesh, because when you export, it will actually triangulate the mesh with this modifier. Uh, click editable poly and collapse to. You can do that to all of them in one go and just use the modifier stack result for everything there. Then you want to affect the pivot and center it so that it's centered. And you can do that for everything in one go as well. And uh, export as FBX or OBJ when you're done. So I'm going to switch over to ZBrush because I've already imported these. Um, I've also just provided the Z tool um, and Z project on the ArtStation page. I'm going to update the Sketchfab and CG Trader pages soon. But, so there we have this and I didn't have very much in the way of uh, a head to use but I'm just going to load one that I've been mucking about with recently. Uh, let's see. Right, so I've got these base heads that I've been kind of using just for fun, just to practice. And they're not very stylized, it's the only thing I'd say. But I can use it to practice this. So I'm going to, um, let's just delete this guy. And I'll keep the eyes, but I'll keep them hidden. And I'll do an append for all the, the curves here. And let's bring that back on. <coughs> the only thing I noticed is that <laughs> these curves are pretty big, so I want to scale them down to a reasonable size that um, I can use to work with. Uh, so depending on the kind of density of the hair that you want, then you're going to scale these and move them out the way. About like so. And if you want to rotate them so that they're kind of facing you as well. Right, so in the, the next stage, I'm basically going to try and make some kind of hairstyle, but I have no idea what hairstyle I'm going to make just yet. So let's get started on this. I'm gonna take, let's see, I'm probably gonna work on like the biggest forms first and just kind of make a, a, a kind of side parting or something. So I need something fairly flat and curved, like one of these guys. So I think this one looks good or even that one. Looks pretty decent. Let's go with that one, right? So I'm just gonna uh, control shift and tap on that and center this. And if I do control and drag, okay, it doesn't let me do that. So I'll do this a different way. I'm gonna auto group 
all of these and then uh, control shift yeah so the only way really to do this is to control shift tap mask it and then unmask it and then I should be able to clone it there we go there's probably an easier way to do that but that will do for now okay and then I'm gonna move this in place I suppose I can put the transparency on if it helps and this is pretty good it's not too too far off the shape and you know it just needs a bit of work but I can see that this is already give me a bit of confidence that uh, these might work really well okay and I guess I could drag that back and do another one Right, at this stage I'm gonna just unmask and I'm gonna move these because obviously there's gonna be a bit of sculpting involved with this. Whether you use a move or snake hook or nudge or whatever, it's just really up to you how you move these around. Um, you could also, if you have the area on ma unmasked, uh, I think you can use like a deformer, soft deformer, like that, and then, oops, let's go back to that. I can move some bits like that. Uh, that's kind of a nicer approach to this right this is obviously going to need like lots of layering and some curves here I'm gonna move these out a good bit I'm gonna assume that these are some kind of overlap so it's, it's tricky because I've, I've not, never tried this workflow but I'm kind of guessing at how it would it would go. Let's turn that off actually. So I guess we're doing a kind of side parting here. <coughs> so I'll take uh, this one this time. So I just want to control shift click on it. Just watch, I don't have any other groups because if I control shift click this, um, or let's do these, that was safe. Okay, it has made a new group out of those, so it would seem right. So I'll go for let's do hmm. So you see the profile of these, there's a kind of rounded top. Uh, these are like a flat top and then these are pointed at either end this gives you some options about what one's best to use some are obviously thinner than others as well I think I'm going to go for like this one okay so if I uh, let's just commit that and go to the uh -huh. Let's just make sure that's masked as well. And drag off a copy. So I'm obviously making my roots the lighter tone. And I don't want that. So I'm going to go to the texture that I have on this. And clone it. And then flip it vertically. So this is just a thing that ZBrush tends to do is, uh, is um, flip these textures or the UVs or something um, to kind of get used to that. So I'll move this into place. Make that 
quite small there and move it here and expand it that way right and then I can just sculpt this in a position <laughs> obviously you could use curve brushes for most of this workflow because that seems to be the way to do it um, but with these you already get a nice profile you, you know you can already see there's a nice profile in some of these I'm just gonna clone that down and shrink it a bit there. I'm not uh, a hairstylist, so <laughs> what I'm making here is completely made up. But I don't know if it's a good look or not. But yeah, let's just clear the mask there. Let's choose that one. So you see here, all these are the same groups. I'm just going to auto groups them so that I only get the one that I want. And then I can just work on that one. Probably unmask it, like like mask it, reveal everything, then flip the mask in so that I can see everything else. I can also, if I did want to just auto group all the time, I can switch my um, mask by poly groups up. That means I only affect the one that I touch, which is kind of easier. I don't know if that works with um, cloning. Um, yeah, because you see it just copies everything. It doesn't work with you only isolate as well, so yeah, the only way to clone them is to uh, mask. You could um, do a mask like that and you'll get the one that you want. Center that on it and then control drag. Right, let's just pretend I'm going to layer this up a bit, like so. I'm just going to clear the mask because I want to see the same tones and auto groups just to make sure I've got a different group on that one. Instead of trying to feed this into place like that, I'll use the uh, deformer again, so I'll do deformer soft. Ah, okay, just make sure you've got the only thing that you want. Um, like the only thing that's unmasked. You can see how that's kind of messed up and shows a bunch of other stuff there. I think I should be able to reset it. It's just to reset. Soft. Okay, it's kind of messing up a bit. Doesn't want to do it. There we go. <coughs> right, and I'm going to reduce the number of points on each just so that I get this general shape here. In fact, I might just add a middle one like that. And I'm gonna change my mask to lasso. And it's a force of habit. Let's go back into that. And I think I move it with, yeah, the arrows here. 
So let's just move it in space. And also rotate, which is nice. Right, and then I uh, just need to make sure that that gets accepted, and I can a bit more work on that there. We'll come out with that. Do auto groups just to make sure it's unique, and choose that one. Mask it, unmask, and clone that over there. can see that this is a time consuming process. I think any hair work is time consuming and needs a lot of patience. So auto groups each time and that means I can mess with these individually So worrying I'm going to move something else. Yeah, this will take a. I reckon it would take about two or three hours to get this to the first first um, version of it. But let's just keep going with some ideas here. So I do want a little kind of flick in here. So I made a few of these flicks. Uh, quite like this one. Control to drag off whatever's unmasked there and scale it up a bit and put it in place. Let's just say it came from there ish. Now if you hold down control in the square here you can actually inflate or deflate, so I'm gonna just deflate it a bit. Let's rotate this round. I think we'll put this on the other side since we know where the parting is. Let's put that run about there and yeah, hope for the best. It's gonna sculpt it so it actually falls with gravity. Better. Right, and I'll keep building this up. I'll try and get a kind of roundedness here. So let's pick another one of uh, one of these guys. Let's go for that one again. I could just copy and paste these, but it doesn't matter. Scale this a bit as well to make it more of a curve. I want to rotate this around here. I kind of what we'll do is I'll make these kind of gaps because I want to gradually fill those. 
but I need to you know, set myself up for that. If I'm intending on some kind of bob or something here, but this is where it gets hard. You can't really move things the way you want. This way, you have to uh, like use a mask and unmask it, just blend it a bit, and then use rotate with the cursor down here. But the problem with that is like everything else is going to get rotated here. So you could use the deformers or just isolate it. Right, and unmask what you want, and then you can rotate this. So, I'm just gonna. There's a way to. Uh, I forget what it is. There's a way to mask this as well. Uh, yeah, I forget what it is, but let's just mask a bit more of that. And then move this down here. Anyway, something like that. <laughs> Sorry, I actually have the cold right now, so <laughs> I'm not in the best way to explain things. My brain's barely working. Nothing unusual. Right, so that one's pretty good. Let me see, I've got the same group there, so I just make sure I do my auto groups. If you're looking for the auto groups, by the way, it's in them poly groups, auto groups. Um, let's just uh, let's isolate that one. Oh, okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo, and. I'll just reset that. I'm going to move this up here just for uh, ease and mask, unmask everything else. Oops. Sorry, we feel everything else. Oh, choose that, mask it, unmask it, and control and drag. And then rotate. So you see the rotations happening at that point. That's kind of what I want. Uh, I'm going to do a few of these just because it's easy to do that at this stage. So I'll just do control and drag that off. Now I'm by no means an expert at this. I'm completely uh, just experimenting. But I can see that this could actually give a decent result, but it takes takes some time. I reckon four hours or something I'll have something usable, but I'm not gonna promise anything. So I'm kind of doing something a bit different on this side. I just need to watch that. Um, what I could do is take these three. So I'll hide these like that and then that's all I can see there and actually like split, do a split hidden. Uh, let's just do it that way, split hidden. And they'll become a new subtool. And then I can do mirror and weld to get those on the other side. <laughs> Okay, then I can come back and work on these and fill in the gaps or whatever. Alright, I might want to do the same with these parts. Let's uh, hide each of these ones, swap around, uh, in fact, did that, split hidden, take that, and I'm going to duplicate it and then do a mirror. 
on that because it's going to end up somewhere else, right? Or wherever it is. I don't think that actually works so well. Yeah, let's try that again. Mirror. Okay. Uh, I know where that is now, it's not moving anything. Weird. Ah, uh, maybe it's mask. Ah, okay, there we go. Right, so I'll do a mirror on that. And we get it on the other side, but now I want to move all this stuff over. So I'm going to turn the mask by polygroups all the way down because I want to move all this in one go and keep the form a bit around the head and also kind of interlock it a little bit as well that'll look nice I'm gonna go here and mess with these a bit as well I think at this point I'll probably time lapse the video if I, if I ever get to finish it. Uh, I'll make a time lapse of this process and share that later. Um, but this gives you a general idea of the kind of workflow I'm thinking of with these things. Um, if you do use this, let me know, and if you you want you want any extra things. Yeah, I'll look to make those, but yeah, this is it's got a long way to go before anything. Now, if you're looking for a uh, mask by polygroups, by the way, it's in the brush masking, auto masking, and it's up here. Yeah, so I was going to wrap this video up. I thought it would be good just to sort of show you the general workflow to this. Um, but I don't want to make a fully fledged tutorial on making hair when I don't really have that much practice and this is more for you guys that are making hair um, so if you want me to extend this just let me know uh, thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one bye